Josh Eddick here on game night on 97.3 ESPN FM and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. The PFL championships are finally here. It feels like we had to wait forever between the PFL playoffs starting in August and now the PFL championships are at the end of October. Of course, you can catch all the action on ESPN2. And joining us is one of the men fighting for that million-dollar championship check. It is Chris Wade, the man himself, fighting for what could be not just a great opportunity to cement your legacy, Chris, but it's also a great opportunity for you to do a lot of things that you have said in other interviews. You are trying to make a point when it comes to this PFL season. Yeah, thank you for having me on, first of all. Um, I'm excited, too. I feel like there's certain days that I, I sit and think about how long the season has been, when it all started, when we started training back in, like, late January, February, and where we are now. And um, I'm just so happy that it's around the corner now. I can't wait. You mentioned that journey. I mean, for those who don't remember all the details, I mean, you guys were in a bubble in Atlantic City, that enclosed environment. Then you got to go to Florida, which is a completely different situation than what's going on in New Jersey, for example. And then you get the job done there. So now you've had to go to two completely different environments, get the job done. What has this year been like for you? Give the audience an idea of what this year has been like for you. Yeah, this has been a wild year. Uh, it wasn't just the season and just the fights. It was navigating the different states' ter- uh, rulings on, on COVID restrictions. So we spent uh, literally a, a full month living in a hotel so far this year. And I was like away from my friends and family. That was uh, 17 days the first time. The first bout and then the second bout was also in Atlantic City. That was another uh, 14 days, I believe. So it was over over a month spent living in a hotel. Uh, like I said, you don't you don't get to really go outside. You don't get to um, do anything but kind of like eat the same things that they keep providing over and over. Um, so it was a test of your mental your mental like toughness being in there. I, you could hear fighters talking about how hard it was mentally uh, in that bubble. They would cross your path in training and people would talk about like how, how uh, annoyed they were by it or how much it was getting to them. So there was that. And now we're, fi- we're fighting in Florida. Finally, things are uh, open up down there and that, that helps a lot. It gives me more freedom to even, even to train and make weight. Uh, I couldn't even like go outside and run if I had wanted to in Atlantic city, everything was done like on a treadmill or a piece of equipment. So, um, it's just, it's nice that we're fighting down there and I could get out in the sun and, and cut weight and just get vitamin D and feel, feel more happy. I'm glad you mentioned the weight cut because that was the other thing I was going to ask you about here is that is you debuted at featherweight for this tournament for this year. Explain to the audience what goes into a weight cut for a fighter. Because I think it's one of the things that people, that, that's probably one of the most foreign things. So like the average person, let's say wrestled or they've been competitive in that environment. Explain to the audience what goes into a weight cut, especially for someone like you who made your debut at featherweight this year. Yeah, I've debated uh, for this one because some people have seen like the behind the scenes kind of thing. And they're like, you should you should film this because this is crazy and uh no one knows you just uh they read even if they're into mma they read a little blurb about how the guy everyone the guys and girls made weight for the fight and everyone flexes and they take a picture and they think oh no big deal they just made weight good but they don't understand the commitment that goes into going down to make that weight what you have to deprive yourself of and uh the calories that you have to uh, like forego to uh, start creating weight loss, especially like I've de- de- I'm cutting an extra ten pounds now, so um, it's it's tough on me because fifty five I I felt like I was in good shape at fifty five as a lightweight. Spent most of my career there, but we always talked that I I I felt like I could cut more but I just didn't know how much. And I, I initially thought 45 was out of reach for me, 
So when mentally, when you say that to yourself, um, it kind of puts it out of, uh, out of your reach. When you tell yourself you can do something, it's amazing how you, you can flip your mind and you can get it done. If you would have asked the old me five years ago, if I could do this, I would tell you, hell no, there's no way. And then now, um, having an opportunity there and just seeing a, a way to create a different story and legacy for, for me, for my career, I, I had to make the move. Chris Wade joining us here talking about PFL Championships is coming up October 27th. You can watch all of the fights on ESPN2. Chris fighting for the Featherweight 2021 PFL Season Championship and that very, very, very nice million-dollar paycheck, which would be well-deserved at this point considering everything you've been through this year. Of course, you can follow Chris Foley on Twitter at C Wade MMA on Twitter. Chris, let's get a little bit... I better idea of who you are because I think a lot of people they might remember you from the UFC when you were there, but you've been in PFL now since 2018. So, what has been the biggest growth for for you from when you were in the UFC to now with the PFL? So, um, the the old me from the UFC, I would say that I was a wrestler that was. But very tough, but I was trying to find my way in the UFC. Um, I made the UFC within like the first, I want to say three years of having turned pro. And um, that's not that long of a time to be striking because I wasn't striking really before any of that. I was just wrestling in college. Um, so I, I had athleticism, but I didn't have a feel for the cage and how to, how to use my striking and, what what would work for me what wouldn't work for me and it's taken a while like i've developed in my career trying to find that part of myself in the cage and i think the difference um between me then and me now is i have an identity on my feet now and i and i if you look at my three fights this year i promise you 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 can confirm it i have not shot for one takedown this year um my intent is to fight someone. If they want to take it to the ground, I'll flow with that. And I will um, try to make them pay for, for trying to do that to me. But I will, I'm will. i not out there looking to initiate takedowns like I was in the past. They can just control and see if they'll give me an opportunity by making a mistake. Now I am, I'm striking. I'm looking to hurt the person. And uh, the only way we're going out of that situation is if they want to be out of it. Chris, you're a guy local to the Northeast. You're up there in New York. And, you know, I've mentioned this to you before after the last fight you had in Atlantic City. You are now 10 and 1 fighting in Atlantic City. You're 3 and 0 fighting in New York. What does it mean to you to be able to have these fights in the Northeast, considering it wasn't too long ago that you couldn't actually be a fighter in New York? Yeah, I mean, that is a dream that came true in the midst of my career. There's a lot of stuff in the MMA community that I'm pretty sure I'm going to miss the boat on. I think when you look at MMA in 20, 30, 40 years, you're going to see guys and girls making way more money, getting benefits and things that they kind of deserve where the old guard didn't get those things. But one of the things that happened to come true while I'm still – competing which was amazing is that they legalized fighting in new york which it was ridiculous that it was uh n not legal in the first place but that's why my record is so high in new jersey is because i made my come up in new jersey because new york wouldn't have us new york wouldn't let us compete in our own state thankfully now i have teammates that can they can start that journey most of them either in new jersey if they so choose in atlantic city or they can take fights in New York, which is which is great. It doesn't cost a ton to try to um, build yourself up because uh, it's, it's, you're not making money that, at that point in your life. You're probably working a job and fighting, trying to figure out if you can make it. Um, I'll always have a, a soft spot in my heart for Jersey um, because even though I'm a New York, uh, I'm a New York guy, Long Island guy. I uh, I know that I came up in New Jersey and it's always been good, a, a place that's good to me. And I'll never forget that. I mean this question slightly sarcastically, but I got to ask you, 
what is the biggest difference between Atlantic City and Uniondale, New York? <laughs> oh, well, geez, Uniondale and Atlantic City. I mean, Atlantic City and, and Uniondale, geez, they're both, they're both definitely different. Uniondale is like the Coliseum. Uniondale is Hofstra. Uniondale is, uh, you know, if you're if you grew up around there, the bars outside of Hofstra, down Hempstead Turnpike. But Atlantic City is like I don't know. It's trouble, but it's it's fun. You got the <laughs> ocean, which you don't have there in Uniondale. You know, you got the boardwalk. You got you could go just casino to casino. And I I remember just how crazy the the nights would kind of get after those fights, the spill out into the clubs. And like, it was a, it was a unique time of like fighting and of my career. I'm fond of, but, uh, Uniondale has a special place in my heart too, from Hofstra and the Coliseum, all the fights that took place there. So two, two different spots. Uh, you know, I'm more fond of Long Island, but I still, uh, Jersey was awesome. Atlantic City was so cool to come up in. Chris, one more before I let you go, and appreciate you joining me here on 97.3 ESPN. Of course, October 27th, the PFL Championships. Chris Wade fighting for the Featherweight Championship of the 2021 PFL season. Chris, when you win on October 27th, what is going to be going through your mind? Tell the audience what it means to you when you win that PFL Championship. When I win this belt, what's going to be going through my mind is like, finally, finally, you, you put a full year, two years together of a, of a commitment to being excellent, of a commitment to doing everything that you could to win a title, to win a championship. I'll be literally talking to myself and saying like, see, you see what happens when you fully commit because, um, uh, in the past in my career sometimes i was i was in but i wasn't all in and uh i'm all in now and i know that the results are going to be in my favor for for that sacrifice that i made again it's the pfl championship october 27th you can watch him on espn2 he is chris wade also follow him on twitter c wade mma on twitter fighting for the featherweight championship of the 2021 pfl season chris appreciate you joining me today Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate it.